Hey guys, Ron Champion here. Uh, for those that don't know me, I am a uh, bass fishing tournament angler on the kayak fishing side. Um, fish a lot of the southern tournaments. Um, fish um, all all the southern states, all the way out, out to, to Texas. Um, so uh, if I've uh, run across you on the trail, um, it's good to. I'm glad you're watching my video. Uh, but uh, if I've never met you before, I'm hoping to meet you at an event sometime. But what I wanted to share with you is how I've added electric power to my kayak. Um, this is using my Hobie PA14, um, putting an electric trolling motor where the Mirage Drive goes. Now, there's a big uproar in the kayak fishing world now about electric motors. And uh, I, this is my thought on it. Uh, whether or not you agree with it or disagree with it, you know, to each their own. But um, I've chosen to do this, especially now with, uh, especially that I'm getting older. <laughs> it's uh, um, being out there on the water for 10, 12 hours a day, this electric motor could come in handy, especially traveling long distances. And, and that's what I'm gonna use it for, uh, especially during free fishing. I can get there faster, I can get back, save what little energy I have left at the end of the day. So uh, being able to use some electric power, I think is gonna be an advantage in certain situations. And um, I know guys that, that are against it, and there's a lot of guys that are for it. Um, if it's legal to use in a tournament, um, I don't think anybody should, should say anything. Uh, I know a lot of us kite guys would love to go out and compete against some of the bass boat guys, uh, just to show that we're as good a fishermen as most of those are. And uh, so really this is no different. You know, if somebody's got an electric motor, you know, that's great, you know, uh, go out. If you don't choose not to use one, go out and, and beat the guys that do. But um, this is what I've uh, went, the route that I've went to add electric power to uh, my Hobie PA14. Um, and uh, hopefully this will be able to help somebody that um, that's looking to do this. It's very inexpensive. So uh, if you have a Hobie, um, adding this right here is, small amount of dollars compared to what you have invested in your actual kayak. Um, what I've chosen to do is use the uh, trolling motor from Bass Pro Shops. Uh, this is the Proud. It's a 30 pound thrust trolling motor. It has five forward speeds and it has three speeds in reverse. Um, it, uh, you can see it works really, really well. Um, there's a couple things that I'm going to do and I'll put this in the video to show uh, a couple of the issues that I've ran into. But overall, it was a really easy build. It's very inexpensive. Uh, it's a great way to add electric power to your kayak, uh, to be able to spend more time out on the water fishing and not pedaling. Uh, so um, I, think, uh, I think for what small amount it costs, um, it's a great way, uh, it's a great investment. So uh, uh, I'll shoot some more video and talk about how I did this and some of the things that I would, tricks that I've used and some things that I would recommend uh, for anybody looking to do this meal. So one thing to keep in mind when you're buying a trolling motor to use for your Hobie is you need to make sure that the foot will actually fit down through this. Now this prowler foot I don't think you could fit anything bigger than this. Uh, I measured several. Um, this was just the I had the opportunity to buy this one for hundred dollars, like I said at Bass Pro. I know there's other trolling motors out there that are smaller um, that may be easier to get in and out. Uh, but again, this is what I had to work with. There's a Bass Pro right down the street, so I bought this, and it, and it works great. You just uh, have to take in consideration uh, putting it in and out. You have to lean it a little bit and. Um, I'll give you the measurements on how much I actually cut off the shaft of this pipe uh, and why I cut that amount off. But to put the trolling motor down in the uh, Mirage Drive, of course you need your prop uh, lined up correctly uh, and you're going to have to lean this trolling motor. So I take the actual cassette, slide it down just a little bit to where it is below the actual hatch and the nose of the foot will slide right down in there. Now it's down in. Really, really simple. And to bring it out, you would do the exact same thing. Make sure that your cassette is down low and you tilt it forward and it'll slide right out. So, so putting it in, I take, once I get it down, I slide the cassette down in there. Now I'm going to adjust my height. 
You don't want it too high to, for the blades to hit. That's why I'm going to actually add a uh, hose clamp. That way I can't pull it up too high. But right there works really, really well. I slide the collar down a couple of turns. It's there. Now, it's not going to go anywhere. Again, I've got to add the conceal around this. That way there's no play in it. Um, I'll add that and show uh, later in the video how it actually cleans it up. Uh, but right now, I haven't installed an actual battery for it. I'm just using my battery for my depth finder uh, just for testing purposes and show for the video. But that's pretty much how you get the trolling motor in and out of the kayak. Uh, just keep into consideration that you do need to move your cassette up and down because this, the trolling motor wants to hit the hatch because it is a long trolling motor and has a big foot, so you have to uh, tilt it. Um, I'll go ahead and tell you, I actually cut off 10 inches of the shaft of the trailer motor and that is the reason behind that. If I left it too long, I might as well not even cut any of it off. Uh, but what I did cut off, I can actually put the trailer motor in the front uh, hatch um, as long as the actual insert is not in here. Um, so you have to take the insert out, but this trailer motor will fit inside the hatch. Um, um, that way you can carry your normal rod drive and your trolling motor and use both of them. One thing that I really like about this trolling motor, uh, it has a built-in voltage gauge on top to let you know uh, the power in your battery uh, and what you've got left. So that's going to come in really, really handy. Uh, like I said, it has five forward speeds uh, and it has three speeds in reverse. Uh, and it also has a light utility light underneath it uh, which will come in really handy at night time uh, it's just an on off button uh, gives you a white light i think that's a really cool uh, feature with this kite with this uh, trolling motor especially this trolling motor is a 30 pound thrust and it only costs a hundred dollars 99 dollars and some change so by the time you add tax you'll have 110 dollars in it uh, so it's a really inexpensive way to add electric power uh, to your kayak um, one thing I do like uh, is the adjustment on the sleeve to where I can raise the, the trolling motor uh, up or down. Um, really simple. Um, to whatever height I want to use that and make sure that it's not doesn't come up high enough to for the blades to actually hit the bottom. Now here is one thing that I'm going to add to this trolling motor. Um, and I've not done it yet. That way my prop doesn't come up and hit the bottom of my boat. Um, I'm going to take and put a hose clamp around the shaft of the trolling motor. Like right now, this is actually too high. So I would want to lower this down a little bit. Um, probably about right there. And see, that's a good distance. I wouldn't really want to come any higher. So I'm going to add a hose clamp right there around the shaft. That way, when raising the trailer motor up, it would bottom out on the cassette. Um, and I would never, my blade would never come up and actually hit the bottom of the kayak or the cassette, especially while it was actually, the blades were turning. So now that the trolling motor is actually in the kayak, one thing that I've noticed with the cassette, um, there's actually play in here. And if you can hear that, if when the trolling motor would engage, it actually is going to make this loud banging, clicking sound, uh, which is no good. The whole thing about uh, kayak fishing is stealth as much as possible. Now granted, you're going to be using an electric motor, it's going to put off sound. So I want to deaden this as much as I can. And what I've got here, uh, this is a piece of conceal. Uh, it's a great product. Uh, you can actually get this through Hook One uh, Outfitters. Um, and it has a peel-off back. Uh, and it's for sound dampening. What I'm going to do is I cut it into a strip. I'm going to cut two of these strips like this. And I'm going to take it and I'm actually going to take the cassette out and place it around the actual outside that way when I stick this cassette down in here it will actually fill this gap and I can actually just stick it down in temporary loud and now you can see it actually really there's not not hard there won't be hardly any sound 
So if I do a little small piece on both sides, um, it should fit down in there really snug and that will eliminate any kind of play uh, that this uh, that this trolling motor has with the cassette. All right, so I have my conceal uh, that I've cut the two strips. I've actually already installed it on one side uh, of the cassette. So I want to install it on the other side. And really all I want it to do is to cover this little top portion right here. So, um, so I'm going to peel the back off of the conceal. And I know where my center part is. So I'm going to start it right here. And I'm going to work my way around. That way I've got it got it all the way. Now what's going to happen is as you can see this is tapered and you're actually going to get a um, if I can get up a bit closer you can see it. Um, I'm going to squeeze the top part down really good that way it's good and attached. And then I'm going to work this bottom part around. And what you're going to get is it's going to pinch up right there and uh, so you're gonna you have to fix that and the way to fix that is to take and cut a small V right out of the center part where that bubble is so I've taken and basically cut a triangle out of it and as I do that I can actually it takes that slack out of that conceal now you can see that's that's pretty good right there I mean it's not perfect but it's uh but it, that's pretty good so I've got it on both sides of the cassette and this should eliminate any kind of play uh, that I've got with this troll motor in so let's see how well this actually works That's in there. That's good right there. So drop my sleeve right in there. I have no play in this. I mean, it is not moving. It's not moving any, and it's locked in there good. So pull it in. Pull it set up. Good. Lock it back down in there. That's exactly what I wanted. Now I've eliminated any kind of play in that. It's not going to make a lot of racket. Um, let me get that down just a little bit so you can see it a little bit. Move this in a little bit. Well, you can see a little bit better. There is no, I mean, I am like, I am pushing on that. There is nothing moving. So, uh, so adding the conceal to um, the cassette on both sides filled what little bit of uh, play I had in here uh, and it just made it a whole lot more sturdy. Um, I would definitely suggest uh, using that. If you don't have conceal, I know there's other products out there, anything uh, that is some type of foam or rubber that would actually uh, fill in that gap uh, will work. But this conceal, um, I believe in this product, it is a, it is a great product for sound dampening. Uh, grip. I mean, you can put it all over the bottom of your boat. Uh, that's my next project with this boat. Um, we're going to do conceal all over the bottom, but as of right now, um, I haven't done it yet. But, but uh, I definitely would uh, recommend doing that um, to fill up that uh, that play of where the cassette is with the trolling motor. So, hope that tip helps uh, somebody uh, if you're uh, going to do this build. All right, I want to talk to you about cutting the shaft down on the trolling motor. Um, first thing that you're going to need to do um, is once you take this, you gotta take the trolling motor apart, you gotta take the wiring out of this, it's really easy. There's only just a few wires that you've actually gotta uh, unhook in here. There's a screw here and two screws in the back. The top separates, you'll unplug the wires. But what I did, and I really recommend this, 
is to, once you open this up, take several pictures with your cell phone uh, or a camera of the actual wiring on the inside, especially what you're unplugging. That way, when you're putting it back together, all you gotta do is look at that picture and, um, and know exactly where your wires go and how they were routed in there. Uh, this trolling motor is really, really simple. It literally took me uh, less than an hour to take it apart, cut the shaft down, put it back together. Um, so, uh, but what I did is, uh, this is the part of the shaft that I actually cut off the trolling motor. Um, it's, I cut off 10 inches. And the reason that I cut the 10 inches off and didn't cut no more is the angle that you have to put this trolling motor in because the foot is so large. So I would, uh, you might be able to cut a little bit more off to make it just a little bit shorter. Um, but I knew that 10 inches would work, would still fit inside this hatch. Uh, and it gives me enough room to raise the trolling motor up to even if I want to stand in the Hobie uh, and still reach down and, and move it, um, turn it, spin it. I could even move it with my leg. So, uh, so 10 inches works really good. Um, and what I used is I used a pipe cutter. Um, you can use a hacksaw, you can use other things, but if you use anything other than a pipe cutter, you got wires that run up, in, up inside this shaft. So you've got to protect those some way. Um, if you do have to use a hacksaw or a Dremel or anything that, that would cut metal, I would suggest to get a piece of half inch CPVC water line pipe. And once you've got this head off, you could actually use it as a sleeve. Slide it down inside of this pipe over the top of your wires. It will go down in here and the wires would go inside. So that would give you another layer when you're actually cutting through the pipe. Uh, I didn't do it because I was using a pipe cutter. Had no issues. Um, but if, um, if you use anything other than a pipe cutter, I would put a sleeve inside here to protect your wiring when you're cutting through it. Um, so I cut 10 inches off. That got me my length. Um, and then once I got that done, all you got to do is mark your center mark uh, on your top and the bottom of your cassette. Uh, drill the hole to match whatever the size shaft of your trolling motor is. Um, the diameter. Um, some trolling motors are different, but if you use this one, I just uh, I take, took some bits and held it up to it, made sure I got the right size. Um, I actually drilled it a little bit smaller first because I wanted it to fit as tight as possible, but where I could actually still slide it up and down with ease. Um, now, one thing that I did do um, after I drilled this hole out is I bought a can of great stuff, uh, the foam insulation. And um, I put foam inside this because this is hollow. Uh, so I sprayed foam in there before I actually put the trolling motor shaft down. Now, undoubtedly the can that I bought was actually no good. Um, it never expanded. Um, and I shook it up really, really well. It, it must have been an old can uh, because it just it never expanded good. So it's probably halfway filled right now. I'm going to take this back apart and actually add some more to it, but I figured I would just to make this a little bit more sturdy. Now this is a really good piece of uh, good cassette. It's thick. It, it, it's a little bit hard to drill drill through, uh, but if you take your time, you'll drill a nice clean hole real easy. Uh, but I am going to take this back apart and add some uh, some more spray insulation foam to just to, to give it give it we might give it enough flotation to if i did drop it over it might float it i don't know but you know that would be awesome if it does but uh so that's one thing i am going to do and again like i mentioned earlier uh i'm going to take a hose clamp and i'm going to add it to the bottom of this that way when sliding the trolling motor the adjustment for the height i would never come down come up too far to where the prop would actually hit the bottom of the uh, of the kayak. So pretty much that's that's it. It's a really easy build. Like I said, it you could do this. You can if you once you got all your tools and stuff out and you had your trolling motor everything ready, got everything on the workbench. I actually did mine on the kitchen table. Um, cleared it off and uh, had plenty of room to work with and it took about an hour. So it's really really easy. Uh, you're going to have, um, if you don't count your battery and all that, you're going to have, you know, 120 bucks basically uh, in a real easy build. 
to add electric power uh, to a Hobie kayak. Um, again, I recommend whatever trolling motor you use, just double check, um, take some measurements of the foot, uh, that way that it will, you know it will fit through uh, the mirage drive hole in the bottom of your kayak. Um, you can't go much bigger, if, if any bigger, than this foot on this Prowler um, trap trolling motor that Bass Pro sells. So um, we'll do some water testing. Um, I'll shoot a little bit of footage of it showing you know what kind of speeds I'm getting out of. But other than that, this was my build uh, to add electric power to my Hobie PA-14. All right, well, I'm out here to uh, water test the uh, trailer motor build uh, for the Hobie PA-14. Um, we've got the Prowler, the 30 pound thrust. Um, gonna see what kind of speeds I can get out of this uh, trolling motor uh, in case you're interested in doing a build like this. So uh, this is the first time I've had it on the water. Uh, so we'll see, uh, see what we actually got. Um, I just clicked it in on uh, speed one. Boat's already moving really, really easy. Um, speed one right now, I'm getting about uh, 1.75 mile an hour. One point eight. So about 1.75 mile an hour on speed one. I'm gonna go on up to speed two. boat's moving really really easy there's just a little bit of wind not a lot so, uh, about two and a half about 2.25 mile an hour for speed two I'm gonna go ahead and get it on up to speed and see what kind of max speed we can get this boat really took off just now I'm on five Boat's moving really good. I'm I'm getting about four and a half to five mile an hour out of this boat. Now now this boat is loaded. Uh, I've got um, my tackle in here. I've got tackle in the front um, and myself. Um, I weigh 295 pounds. I'm a I'm so so this is a lot of weight in this boat, and I'm still getting four and a half. It'll jump four and a half to to five mile an hour out of this 30 pound thrust trolling motor um, at full speed so it's actually it's moving really really well so that's right at three mile an hour um, it's bouncing back two and a half to three mile an hour um, on speed three it's really quiet. I'm, I'm actually surprised. I thought it would be make more noise than this, but it's it's really really quiet. Adding the conceal to that um, cassette has really made a difference. So uh, yeah, I, I'm really impressed. This is uh, this is this is really good. Well, as you can see, um, the trolling motor is working really great. Uh, I'm, I'm impressed with it. Um, I'll do some more testing. Um, like I said, this is the first time it's been on the water. So um, I plan on doing some salt water testing with it as well. Um, see what kind of range I can get out of it. Um, but so far, with what, I, what I've done today, um, I'm, I'm impressed. I think it'll be uh, um, it's just a great addition. It's just a good tool. Uh, to be able to add uh, electric power to your kayak. So um, if, uh, if you got any questions, um, just um, comment below uh, on the YouTube channel. Um, if um, you need um, information on where to get the trolling motor, um, any of the accessories that I've used to uh, with the conceal, um, 
just uh, just comment below, and I'll be glad to answer questions as quick as I possibly can. Um, I think it's uh, for the for 115, 120 bucks. You can't go wrong. So uh, thanks for watching. Hope this helps somebody that's wanting to do a build to add uh, electric power to a uh, Hobie kayak. Um, appreciate y'all watching. God bless you. We'll see you next time.